Hello and welcome to Boring Dad Gaming. It's October now, so as promised we're going to be doing some uh, slightly, not horror games, I don't really play horror games as such, but you know, sort of creepy games. Games with horror overtones, eerie overtones, Lovecraftian, atmospheric, dark, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of them from sort of a narrative game kind of standpoint, like this one. It's um, a point and click adventure game, uh, it's supposedly a very strong narrative, uh, supposedly a very good game. Uh, it's called The Excavation of Hobbs Barrow, and it was uh, very recently released on Steam, and I'm sure other platforms as well. Um, I haven't really read too much about it. Oh wow, well, there we go. That's a little sign of things to come there, I hope. Um, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's dive in and see what this is all about. Okay, that's us. That's not me coughing, by the way. Let's go this way. If I double click, does she walk faster? No. What's this? Ah, Miss Bateman. Welcome back to Ticehurst House. It's been quite some time. Terrible weather this evening, is it not? Nurse Blaketon has had enough of me smoking inside. Makes her cough, you see. A bit of rain won't kill me, will it? Unless it does. <laughs> you, uh, you mustn't be interested in me nattering on. Give my regards to your father. Nurse Blaketon is preparing his supper. Okay, do I get my cursor back? You look pale, Miss Bateman. Do head inside. We'll catch your death out here. Um, okay, is she going in of her own accord? It looks like it. The excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Dearest Mother, I hope this letter will reach you. I have spent these past years in torment, trying to piece together what remains of fractured memories. What I am about to recount to you will seem beyond comprehension, but I beg for your patience. Not sheep. I will endeavour to explain the events that led me to Ticehurst House that night. As far as I can recall, this whole wretched story started with the receipt of a letter from a Mr. Leonard Shoulder. The letter brought me to the isolated village of Bewley, deep in the moors. No really? station master in sight. I hope the village isn't too far away. I can't recall our exact meeting place. Mr. Shoulder mentioned it in his letter. Uh, okay. Left click to walk, right click to examine. To access the inventory menu, move your mouse to the top of the screen. Double click on an exit to teleport directly to it. Well, that's good to know. Uh, the game will occasionally autosave, la 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 la. Um, F5 quick save, understood. I don't know if this is the sort of game you can die in, it might be, but I'm not sure. So let's see, what have we got? We got tracks. The tracks look quite untarnished. I don't think many trains come through here. Bewley, I have great expectations for this barrow. The post looks unattended. Okay, top of the screen. So what have we got? We've got letters. Dear Miss Bateman, I write this letter in the hope of piquing your curiosity. I read about your expertise in barrows, and if I understand correctly, you are writing a book on them and the treasures they contain. I live in the village of Bewley, where a most special barrow can be found on the outskirts. 
It is rectangular in form and is certainly tall enough to stand up in. The place is steeped in local legend and there is rumour of secrets to be found deep within. I hope you will not misunderstand me and find this letter intrusive. If you wish to visit Bewley and excavate the barrow, I will be pleased to be your guide. Please send your response to the Plough and Furrow Inn, Bewley. I shall await your letter. Yours respectfully, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Is this another letter? Dear Miss Bateman, marvellous news. I shall meet you at eight o'clock in the evening on the 14th of this new month at the Plough and Furrow Inn, Bewley. The inn has fine rooms, which you will find adequate for your short stay. When we meet, I shall tell you more of the circumstances surrounding the site, which is referred to locally as Hobbs Barrow. It is not located on my own land, but we will have no issue gaining permission to excavate. I wish you a safe journey. I must make my way to the Plough and Furrow Inn. It says, lady. Excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for the plough and... Ah, young lady. Oops. Leave the station and follow the dry stone wall for around half a mile. You'll come to Bewley. Go straight ahead and you'll find the market square. The inn is to the side at square. Thank you very much. What can you tell me about Bewley? Well, it used to be a thriving village. Not so much now. I don't spend much time there these days. Are you local? Ah, yes, a local I am. But I don't live in the village. Where are you travelling to today? That would be none of your business, young lady. Quite. Apologies. I wish you a pleasant journey. That escalated quickly. All right, let's go on. Can I double-click to leave by the exit? Um, or is that the exit? Where's the exit? Oh, is this the exit? Uh, what brings you to Bewley? I beg your pardon? What brings you to Bewley? So let's remind her own beeswax like she did us. I'm here to visit a local landmark, Hobbs Barrow. Hobbs Barrow? Well, I can't say I've heard of it. For what reason? I wish to excavate it. Grave robber, are you? Not at all. I merely have an interest in antiquities. Not much to be found in Bewley, if you ask me. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. I'll take my chances. Hmm. Can't say I didn't warn you. Don't go on the moors. That was odd. <laughs> right, there we go. So we teleported to the exit. That was cool. That worked all right. This just looks like flavour. Exit there. There's doors. There's a crow here. The old woman told me to go straight ahead to get to the inn. I'll have time to explore tomorrow. All right. I guess we won't stay out. Beating raw metal into a fine object is an admirable skill. The horseshoe is nailed firmly to the wall. The blacksmith looks closed. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. This must belong to someone. I should leave it alone. So straight across the marketplace. Uh, that's like a shoe shop, judging by the sign. It's all closed up. This thing. The cross denotes this as the site of a market, or perhaps a site of traditional religious significance. Plough and, Plow and like furrow. A... I have a bit of time before Mr. Shoulder arrives. I should inquire about a room. Need some of the local colour. Hello there. What's the young lady doing out alone in this? in weather. What are you what doing? What are you doing out <laughs> in this weather? Waiting for you, my dear. I doubt that. And I've waited long enough. So, give us a kiss now, won't you? <laughs> Why, of course. Wouldn't your wife disapprove? Wife? Bloody hell, my wife! My tea will be on the table at this hour, and if I don't get back, she'll be roaring. Not until we meet again. What a buffoon. It's a charming welcome. 
I should speak to the innkeeper about a room. I don't want to take the painting with me. I'll examine it. Then. It's a crudely painted scene that appears to be of a biblical nature. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> Must be Adam and Eve looking at it. The painting depicts a rocky edge lake. A small bronze plate states the name Lake Cubilius. A decorative plate. This one depicts a bull. A decorative plate depicting an eagle. All right, well, here's the innkeeper. Let's talk to him. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, lass. How can I help you? I am in need of a room for the night. Aye, we aren't short of those. One night, is it? I shall need at least two nights, maybe more. Aye, it is not a problem. Three shilling per night. That includes your dinner and tea. A fair price. I'll need that payment up front for the two nights. We got six shillings. This is payment for the room. Thank you. Can I ask for your name, lass? Thomasina Bateman. And will Mr. Bateman be staying with us tonight? No, I am not wed. My assistant is arriving in Beaulieu tomorrow. Your assistant, you say? Will you be needing another room? Please. I'll keep a room spare. It's not quite as nice as yours, I'm afraid. Not a problem, sir. I'm sure it will be adequate. Kenneth is a man of inexpensive taste. Here's your key. Just go through the door to the right of the bar, then up the stairs. Room number two. Thank you. Can I help you with your luggage? No, thank you, sir. I can manage. I should go upstairs and freshen up before Mr. Shoulder arrives. Okay, well, let's go do that now. Settle him. This shall do nicely. Time to change into something more comfortable. Just like Indiana Jones. Much better. Kind of. Right, what's in the wardrobe? I've hung my dress inside. Aside from that, the wardrobe is empty. Okay. What's this? An empty bowl has been provided for washing. Do I need a wash? This may come in handy. Oh, no, she's just stolen it. <laughs> Can I put it in the bowl? I feel relatively clean. Perhaps I could use this water for something else. Maybe. I've What's stored my case in there. A box within a box. Wheels within wheels. A decorative plate depicting a goat. A painting of surprising quality. It portrays a rocky outcrop overlooking a vast moor. Perhaps a local landmark. Ah, complimentary matches. Useful. There's only one match left, though. As the only though. light source in the room, I ought to leave this here. Jammed shut. The wood must have warped over the years. Okay, doesn't seem a huge amount to do here, so let's uh, just leave. Alright, well we can talk to some of the locals, perhaps. Good day, sir. <laughs> or not. Good afternoon, sir. Note for you here. I beg your pardon? I said there's note for you here, lass. Be on your way. Charming. I kick over his ball game. Hello, sir. What? I'm waiting here for a man named Leonard Shoulder. Do you know him? I don't. Do you, love? Never heard of him. There you have it. Now clear off. <laughs> A majestic animal, cut down in his prime. A pixie-faced peasant boy, painted in a naive style. Naive this painting style shows is. a Rubenesque figure brushing her hair. Quite unusual to see such a sensual work in a room like this. A colourful work depicting a bashful knight. It is signed N. Hamley. A biblical scene of some kind. An angel is depicted looking longingly to the heavens. Oh, right, there's old geezer. Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, Do you know a Mr. Leonard Shoulder? 
You're not local. You've come on that bloody train, haven't you? <laughs> Bewley's going to dogs. My name is Thomasina Bateman, and you are... None of your business, lass. <laughs> Where's your husband? None of your business, sir. Ha! You're brave coming in here, all on your own. I'm a grown woman. I'm Cyril. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Cyril. Do you know Mr. Shoulder? That be none of your business, lass. I don't come to your city poking around asking questions, do I? Man just wants to enjoy his ale in peace. I take it you are not enamoured with the railway station? Mule is going to be swarming with outsiders, like you. We don't want you coming here. It's as simple as that, lass. Why not? This is our town, our land. I assure you, I am not here to cause trouble. We'll see about that, won't we? What can you tell me about Bewley? We're a proud community. I've lived here my whole life. It's not a very welcoming one. Not much here to interest folks like you. Folks like me? Aye. Bye for now. ta -da, lass. Well, at least you'd have a conversation with us. I do not the lavatory. Uh, let's talk to the innkeeper. Not sure how to advance time till... Miss Bateman, you've transformed. I feel far more comfortable in my outdoor clothing. You look like one of those explorers you see in the newspaper. I guess you could call me an explorer of sorts. I'm Stanley. Stanley Kemp. A pleasure to meet you, Stanley. And tell me, I trust your room is adequate. Most adequate. Excellent. I am looking for a man named Leonard Shoulder. Aye, I know the man. I'm to meet him here tonight. Can I get you something to drink while you wait? Not yet, thank you. What can you tell me about Mr. Shoulder? Aye, he's a quiet fellow. He only comes here to check his post. Yes, I've been corresponding with him using this address. Have you now? You found yourself an admirer. <laughs> Not quite. What business do you have with old Leonard, then? Well, if you must know, I am what some people call a barrow digger. A what? A barrow digger. What in God's name is that? Are you familiar with tumuli? Afraid not. Barrow is another word for tumulus, or tumuli in the plural. A profoundly interesting subject. You've lost me. I excavate ancient burial sites looking for relics. A barrow is traditionally a circular mound of raised earth enclosing a burial chamber. Oh, I? You're a grave robber. <laughs> I am no such thing. Don't worry, lass. I've met all sorts in here over the years. I won't tell anyone. I assure you, my goal is more noble than petty grave robbery. What sort of relics do you find, then? Gold? Silver? Bones? Well, rarely gold or silver, but treasures, certainly. Ancient pottery is the most common find. I've been excavating barrows all over the country. I'm documenting my findings in preparation for my book. It shall be called Vestiges of the Antiquities in Rural England. Oh, aye. Very interesting. But what does old Leonard have to do with this? He sent me a letter in which he told me about an unusual barrow in Bewley. A site called Hobbs Barrow. I'm meeting him here this evening to find out more. I've lived here nigh on my whole life, and I've heard nout about a Hobbs Barrow. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Kemp. Well, uh, I've been the proprietor of this inn for the last 16 years. I worked as a drover all over the country in my younger days. Saved up my coin and bought this place. It's a fine inn. Thank you. I often run short of ale, but my rooms are rarely full. We don't get many outsiders wanting to stay overnight here in Bewley. What can you tell me about Bewley? Aye, it's a quiet place. People keep to themselves, work hard. I look forward to exploring the village tomorrow. There's not but St Edmund's Church is a fine building. Worth a visit. Are you sure you've never heard of Hobbs Barrow? Not in my life, lass, but I'll tell you something. The moors stretch further than the eyes can see when you leave this village. There's no doubt many a discovery to be made. Mr Shoulder said the Barrow is well known locally, a place of legend. I'm afraid you're going to have to speak to him about it. 
why are you interested in digging around in the dirt, lass? Haven't you better things to do with your time? I enjoy nothing more than the thrill of discovery, uncovering the past and piecing together our history. I inherited this passion from my father. Oh, a barrow digger too, eh? Indeed. He would take me with him on excavations as a child. Does he still come with you now, on your own adventures? I'm afraid my father's been bedbound by illness for many years. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, lass. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. He is well looked after at a private hospital. Thanks for your time. As you were. Mr. Shoulder should really be here by now. I'll sit down and wait. Okay. Where on earth is he? What a waste of time this is turning out to be. Don't tell me this is Leonard's shoulder. There, miss. <laughs> Not you again. I just wanted to apologize for earlier. I got home, had my tea, but it gave me an ache in belly. How so? I felt bad for how I spoke to you. I'm sorry. The drink gets a hold of me sometimes. Let's start again, shall we? My name is Arthur Tillett. Thomasina Bateman. What brings you to Bewley, anyway? I'm here to meet someone, but he has not arrived. His loss, if you ask me. Perhaps you know the gentleman, Mr. Leonard Shoulder. Oh, I know Mr. Shoulder all right. If I may be so bold as to say, he's a bit long in the tooth for you. The relationship is not what you're implying. I've never met him. In fact, I know very little about him at all. Get me an ale and I'll tell you all about the old sod. Yeah, all right. One <laughs> ale coming right up. Thank you very much, Miss Bateman. Then I'll tell you all about old Leonard's shoulder. You better know something. What's this thing? Handkerchief. Okay. A tankard of your finest ale, Mr. Kemp. I mean, we could probably stretch to non-finest, honestly. There we are. Two pence, please. Two pence. Well, this Thank must you. be some time ago. <laughs> this was the last of my now. money, but Kenneth will be here tomorrow with more funds. Here you are, Arthur. Thanking you. Oh, that hits the spot, that does, lass. Now then. Old Len. Leonard Shaw. Okay. Arthur? Well, interesting information. Oh, for heaven's sake, the man is in a drunken stupor. Oh well. I do not need to use the lavatory. We could pour our water on his head. Is she actually going to do it? <laughs> oh, what the hell was that for? You passed out, Mr. Tillett. Oh, sorry, lass. Where were I? Leonard's shoulder. Hold on another minute. I'm making for a piss. This man is unbelievable. Okay, I think I should go ahead and check on him. He's Miss been a Bateman. Bit, it's been a while. My apologies. The ladies are closed due to faulty plumbing. You'll have to use the gents. Lovely. Mr. Tillett. Look at these things on fire. Mr. Tillett. Mr. Tillett, are you in there? It looks like the towel has not been washed in months. Mr. Tillett, are you in there? Hmm. 
that's not Mr. Tillett. Well, you're not Mr. Tillett. <laughs> I'd rather not touch it. The thing stinks to high heaven. Yeah, it's a good old toilet cat. The door opens a crack, but appears to be blocked from the other side. I think I can hear someone moving around. Mr. Tillett? Arthur, are you out there? Judging from the draft coming from below, this door must lead outside. I should investigate further. I can't reach the window from down here. Mm, maybe we just go out the front and walk around the back? Excuse me, sir. Hmm. Someone has wedged the door shut. Mr. Tillett. Why would he have done that? Oh, don't go back in. Did Mr. Tillett leave, then block the door behind him? Something strange is going on here. Who was that old chap I saw outside the alley? He headed eastward. Maybe I could catch up with him and ask him if he saw Mr. Tillett. There's that glove as well. Let's pick that up. A pearly white gent's glove. It's certainly unlike anything Mr. Tillett was wearing. Seems rather out of place here. Peculiar. I could tether a horse here if I had one. I suspect the barrels are empty, otherwise the locals would be rolling them into their cellars. Good point. All right, let's move on. Let's head this way. There he is. Sir? Just another friendly local. The old man has disappeared into the darkness. i best turn back to the inn. I don't wish to go knocking door to door. That is. There's much else for us to do here then. I don't wish to disturb the locals. I shouldn't wander too far. Mr. Shoulder may still show up and I don't wish to miss him. Maybe that was Mr. Shoulder. Maybe he killed Arthur for calling him an old sod. Last orders. I should get some sleep. Finding the missing men of Bewley shall have to wait for tomorrow. How can I help you? Talk to her. Have you seen <laughs> Arthur Tillett? I thought he were with you. He went to the lavatory and has not returned. <laughs> That sounds like Arthur Tillett. Don't worry, lass. He'll be back. <laughs> Thanks for your time. As you were. Is anyone else still here? Not really. I guess we go to bed. Kenneth will be arriving tomorrow at midday. I should get some sleep. Yes, I must get some sleep. I shall track down Mr. Shoulder tomorrow. Miss Bateman? Yes? Off to bed? Yes. I'm afraid Mr. Shoulders let me down. The rotter. Perhaps he will make himself known tomorrow. I should hope so. This is turning into a waste of my time. Ah, don't mind the locals, miss. It's just that we don't get a lot of visitors in Bewley. Quite. They mean well, believe me. Sure, Mr. Kemp. Please, call me Stanley. Good night, Stanley. Sleep well, Miss Bateman.
toilet cat. <laughs> Why is he making that face? First day, Adventus. Such horrid dreams. The stinky old cat. from the inside, just as I left it last night. Hmm. As I suspected, I must have dreamt of that wretched looking cat. <laughs> I must say I'm relieved. Right then. Let's see if I can track down the elusive Leonard's shoulder. I'm rather anxious to get to this barrow. I also wonder what happened to Mr. Tillett. Good morning, Miss Bateman. Good day, Stanley. Did you say we'd have breakfast here? Did you sleep well, Miss Bateman? Yes, thank you, Stanley. Splendid. I'm happy to report the rain of yesterday has lifted. It's a clear morning outside. Crisp. I've prepared a room for your assistant. What time will he be arriving? His train will get in around midday. Kenneth will also be bringing my excavation equipment. Oh, I. Uh, what does that entail? Picks, shovels, buckets, lighting and such. He usually packs it in a large crate. Come to think of it, I'll need somewhere to store it. You're welcome to use the alley behind the inn for any such bulky items. Is it safe to do such a thing? I can assure you the local folk are not thieves, Miss Bateman. That's not what I... Now, now, say nothing more of it. Thank you, Stanley. I'll let you get on with your day. I'll be back with my assistant when he arrives. Miss Bateman? Yes? I've something I wish to get off my chest, as it were. I've been tossing and turning all night, Miss Bateman. I feel rotten, I really do. What on earth are you talking about? As you know... I like to run an honest establishment. And well, I have not been honest with you, lass. I do know of Hobbs Barrow. You do? I do. Many here do. There are stories tied to that place, you know. If I've learned anything in this life, it's that some stones are best left unturned. Old Leonard Shoulder is someone to be wary of too. I can't tell you what to do, lass, but you'd best avoid him. Mysterious. Why must I be wary of Mr. Shoulder? The man has a certain reputation. For what? You've seen it already. Were he here to meet you last night? No. Precisely. A man not to be trusted. Where does Mr. Shoulder live? I can't say for sure. As I think I told you last night, he's a quiet man and keeps to himself. He only comes in here to collect his post. Leads me to believe he lives a fair distance away. Certainly not in the village itself. Hmm. Okay. Might someone around Bewley be able to help me find him? You could ask around. As I say, lass, Bewley folk mean well. Don't forget that. Apart from the ones we've Why spoken to Why lie to me so about Hobbs Barrow? I know, lass, I know. I feel dreadful. But why? What are these stories you speak of? I really can't tell you more. If you insist on visiting that place, you'll have to seek out Mr. Shoulder. He brought you here. He should be the one to tell you. I must say, Mr. Kemp, this is all quite puzzling. I've never let local superstitions stop me in the past. I pride myself on being a woman of logic and reason. I have no time to waste on such matters. As I say, seek out Mr. Shoulder. He can tell you more. I shall return later. Good day to you, lass. I doubt he was going to tell us where it is. Oh, if you see Herbert around here, be sure not to feed him. Herbert? A local stray cat. He comes in now and then searching for scraps. I'm sick of cleaning his vomit off the floor. Quite. 
I'll be sure not to feed him. Thank you. <laughs> Herbert the toilet cat. It seems I may be fighting a battle against some sort of local superstition. Is there a single barrow in England that doesn't have some ghastly tail attached to it? Hogwash. All of it. I have a few hours until Kenneth arrives. I should use this time to find Mr. Shoulder. Mm, map unlocked, eh? Uh, who's this guy? Hello. My name is Thomasina, and you are... Now then, that's none of your concern, love. <laughs> More of the friendly people. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? I don't know out about no Leonard Shoulder. What can you tell me about Hobbs Barrow? Not to be found digging around in those things. You know of local barrows, then? Don't concern yourself. What can you tell me about Bewley? Not much around here, love. Not worth mentioning to you, like. I see. What do you do around here? Hey, oh, you're not scared of sticking your neb in. I look after the churchyard, dig the graves. <laughs> Goodbye. Ta -ra. I meant to ask him about the churchyard, but it probably doesn't matter. Hugely. I'll look around the village first. No kidding. Hello? Yes. <clears throat> My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Douglas. It's a pleasure to meet you, Douglas. That's a great sword technique you have. Thanks, miss. Mr. Crozier's gonna make me a real one when I turn 12. I'm preparing myself to fight the lantern worm. What is the lantern worm? It's gonna come back and get us all. John Lantern thought he killed it at the River Ware. But my father told me it still lives. We must all be prepared. The lantern worm isn't real, Douglas. Father just told you that to get you out of his air. Not true. I saw it slithering out by the beck. Like a giant eel, it were. I ran home so fast I thought I would fly. Sorry, miss. My brother has a vivid imagination. Children often do at his age. I'll keep training. You will all thank me when I thrust my sword deep into its fat belly. Douglas, <laughs> this lady doesn't want to hear your nonsense. Do you know a man called Leonard Shoulder? That's a funny name. Who is Mr. Crozier? He's a blacksmith. His forge is just over there on the other side of the square. <sighs> Don't you think 12 years of age is a little young for a real sword? I'll be a master swordsman by then. Goodbye. Goodbye, miss. Good day. Hello, miss. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No. Are you sure? Yes. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Our parents don't like us talking to strangers, miss. So you know of it? No. Are you sure? Yes. Goodbye. Well, that was Bye, miss. <laughs> I don't think anyone is home. Oh, okay. I can't remove the plaque. They remove it. Just look at it. A small plaque beside the door reads Vicarage. Oh, they're probably at the church then. Hmm. No one here. Why do I think none of these houses are going to have anyone in? I don't think anyone is home. Okay, well it sounds like the blacksmith's at work, so maybe we can go talk to him. Here he is. Good day. Yes? Mr. Crozier, I presume. Aye, George Crozier, at your service. My name is Thomasina. Aye, can I help you? Are you a Bewley native, Mr. Crozier? Aye. Born and bred. This were my father's forge before mine. How is business faring? I do an honest trade. There'll always be horses needing shoes and farmers needing tools. You'll let me know if you need out made or mended. I'll do you a fair price. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. 
Do you know a man by the name of Leonard Shoulder? Oh, hi. Old Leonard. Have you seen him recently? No, not recently. Do you know where he lives? Why all these questions, lass? I need to speak with him. He invited me to Bewley. Oh, he'll turn up. I've seen him in the plough and furrow from time to time. <sighs> but do you know where he lives? I need to find him. I believe he lives somewhere out on the moors. Can't tell you out more than that. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Do you know of a local landmark named Hobbs Barrow? There's a fair many barrows found out on the moors, lass. Too many to put a name to. Not a soul in Bewley pays them any mind. What can you tell me about Bewley? We don't get many visitors here, outside of market days. But there's plenty of work for the village blacksmith. Where are you from, then? I arrived yesterday on the train from London, by way of Derby. Oh, aye. I've heard about London. What have you heard? Plenty of factories there. Yes, indeed. The city is always changing and moving forward. Too busy for me, though, lass. I prefer a quieter pace. Aye. When do market days run in Bewley? Once or twice a month. The next oh. one is tomorrow. How delightful. Unless your vice is cabbages, there'll be nothing <laughs> to interest a young lady. I don't mind a cabbage. Then you're in luck. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. What's this thing? Have a fantastic seen? specimen. Alas, it is not mine to take. I have one just like this. All right, well, we can exit towards the church, perhaps. Oh. That's an old biddy there. Memorial plaques. What's this? Excuse me. Do you think anyone would mind if I borrowed this trowel? You help yourself, dear. Father Roach won't mind lending it. Just be sure to put it back when you're finished. Of course, thank you. It is more blessed to give than to receive. In memory of Romeo Hegg, dearly missed by his beloved <laughs> Juliet. In memory of William Ager. Okay. What's she got here? Cakes. A fine assortment of baked goods. A lovely treat for those who enjoy such things. Unfortunately, I don't think the cakes are free. Hello. Hit her with the trowel. Good day. Would you like to buy one of these cakes, pet? What kind of cakes do you have? I have some lovely Bakewell puddings. The sweetest marriage of almond and jam. I can tell you're not from around here, because if you were, you would know about my Bakewell puddings. They are quite famous. Alas, I'm not carrying any money with me. That's unfortunate, pet. I'm sorry, I, I can't give them away for free. The money goes to the church, you see, and one cannot shirk one's duty to the church. I understand. Maybe she knows him. Do you know a local man called Leonard Shoulder? Yes, I know Leonard. What business do you have with him? It's a long story, but I'm trying to find where he lives. I'm afraid I don't know, dear. Father Roach has access to the parish register. He might be able to help you. Ah, good. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? Hobbs what? Hobbs Barrow. A local burial mound. The only place of burial I know about and care for is in this very churchyard. What can you tell me about Father Roach? He is a lovely man and an exemplary servant of the Lord. He's been the vicar of St. Edmunds for many years. Is he in the Where church? can I find Father Roach? At this time of day, he'll be taking his exercise in Hearn Wood, to the west of the village. Thank you. I'll go find him. Be sure to listen out for his merry whistling. Such a jolly man. Thank you for your time. Lord be with you. Can I get in the church? Goodness me, look at these box pews. 
I've never seen any as tall as that before. Most unusual architecture, even for the Normans. I see a necklace. Hmm. Someone has left a necklace hanging here. A silver cross. Sterling by the look of it. Maybe I can reunite it with its owner. Or keep it. Okay, what is here? Altar, box pews. A like. memorial list of former vicars. They stretch back several hundred years. I can admire the craftsmanship from afar. I've no time for such things. This must be where the local vicar sacrifices the newborns. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we've robbed the joint. Move on. Ooh, what's this? It's locked. Yeah, well, this is west. That goes probably to the moors, but maybe we go this way? Here he is. lens is extremely sharp. Yeah, what do we got? Oh, we use, maybe we use the glove to pick it up. Perhaps I shouldn't risk soiling this glove until I find its owner. Okay. Um, we can cut him with a trowel. The trowel's blade <laughs> is dull and rusted. I need something that will provide a cleaner cut. Okay, well I haven't seen anything thus far. Far, unless the spectacles would do it, but uh, how would I? Oh, maybe the hanky. This handkerchief was a gift from my mother. I hope she will understand. This should work. Okay. Oh, broken glass. Can I use that to? Can I cut the vicar with broken glass? Are you sure you want me to do this? Yes, it will cure me of my ills. I shall do as you ask, father. Thank the Lord for my spare pair. God bless you. I already feel quite better. I'm glad, Father. The rapid healing properties of bloodletting cannot be overstated. I'm Frederick Roach, vicar of St. Edmund's Church. My name is Thomasina Bateman. It's a pleasure to meet you. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. What ails you, Father Roach? I... I just ate a rotten berry, that's all. I, I like to pick him. blackberries for my supper, you see. They are quite delicious, as long as you mind the bramble. My apologies again. I wish we had met in different circumstances. I'm looking for Mr. Leonard's shoulder. Oh yes? Are you a relative? No, it's a long story, but he invited me to Bewley. And he didn't tell you his address? He was to meet me last night at the Plough and Furrow, but he never came. I see. Well, let me welcome you to Bewley on his behalf. Thank you, Father. Do you know where Mr. Shoulder lives? Let me think. It's been many moons since I've paid him a visit. 
Perhaps you could allow me to take a look at the parish register? No need. I remember it now. A fair hike across the moors. Could you please give me directions? I'll take you there myself. It's the least I can do after you aided me, so... Capital. Thank you. Just let me know when you're ready to pay him a visit. I'll be resting here for the time being. What do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I can't say I've heard of it. It's supposedly a famous local landmark. I'm afraid I know nothing about it. Let's go to the ch uh, let's go to Shoulders House now. I'm ready to go to Mr. Shoulders House. Excellent. Sure there's lots more to I explore. I feel the fresh air but... will do me well. Follow me. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Mrs. De Plancy. Mrs. De Plancy, this is Thomasina Bateman, a visitor to our parish. We've already had the pleasure of meeting, Father. Excellent. Miss Bateman, don't hesitate to try one of Mrs. De Plancy's wonderful cakes. Yes, I've heard about her famous Bakewell puddings. I'll be here all day, young lady. But remember, once they're gone, they're gone. Those little whelps have already gobbled up all the gingerbread. You are doing God's work, Mrs. De Plancy. He smiles upon us, Father. Miss Bateman, if you'd like to follow me. Let's talk of graves, of worms, and epitaphs. Make dust our paper. And with rainy eyes, write sorrow on the bosom of the earth. Let's choose executors and talk of wills. Shakespeare? Quite. Which play? Uh... Now, I don't know. Um... I'm quite familiar with Hamlet. I don't recognise that. I'm going to guess maybe Macbeth. Macbeth. Magnificent guess, Miss Bateman. But I'm afraid that passage is ah, from Richard II. I don't know Richard II. Really. Studying the work of the Bard is one of my favourite pastimes. Follow me. Behold. The vast expanse of God's creation. The moors extend as far as the mortal eye can see. Beautiful, is it not? Agreed. Indeed, the moors are beautiful. The beauty of God's creation is that it takes so many forms. How can one take in such a view and not have faith? Some look at these moors and think this a godless land. But I tell you, he is found in all domains. The Lord's work is all about us. Tell me, Miss Bateman, do you believe in God? I was brought up Anglican. The church was an important part of my early life, Father Roach. But what happened to my father eventually made me question things. If you don't mind me asking, my child, what happened to your father? He had an accident when I was very young. Come along now, Thomasina. Let's get out of the rain. This is the house from the beginning, is Remember it what I told you, all right? Be a good girl. People are unwell here. They don't want to hear you running about making noise. Understood? Yes, Mother. Good. And don't annoy the nurses. I promise I won't. Good. Now, let's see your father. Mother doesn't sound too happy. 
Daddy is sleeping. Daddy, wake up! Mummy? Mummy? Good evening, Mr. Bateman. Hello, little one. You must be Thomasina? Y yes My name is Nurse Blaketon. I just need to talk to your mummy for a little bit. I'm sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Bateman. Mrs. Bateman? Will he ever talk again, Nurse Blaketon? The doctor is uncertain, Mrs. Bateman. There is the possibility that Mr. Bateman won't regain any movement at all. But we will do our utmost to look after Mr. Bateman here at Ticehurst Man. He will have a nurse by his side at all times, I can assure you. What sort of god would allow this fate to befall such a kind and honest man? I'm sorry to hear this. God moves in mysterious ways, but he loves us all. Hmm. Come along now. Hello. She scampered off in a hurry? Who was that? Some primitive folk make their home out on the moors. I suggest you keep your wits about you when you are exploring, and don't stray too far from Bewley. I see. How much farther to Mr. Shoulder's house? Still quite a walk, I'm afraid. But we'll get to him soon enough. Now then, take a look at this. I mean, it's going to take longer if he keeps stopping to show us every little thing. Legend has it that this cairn has stood here for over a thousand years. How remarkable. The Devil's Toe. I beg your pardon? That's what it's called. The Devil's Toe. Oh, I see. Come now. Onward. We walked and walked across that vast, featureless landscape. All the while, Father Roach was whistling away merrily. Just as I had begun to wonder if we were hopelessly lost, a building emerged from the mist. Mr. Shoulder's cottage. Here we are, Miss Bateman. Unless my memory fails me completely, this is Mr. Leonard Shoulder's house. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. Now, now. No need to thank me after your providential assistance today. However, I have something to ask you. Yes? Please don't tell Mrs. De Plancy about my little scene in the woods. She will only fret. And the poor dear woman has enough on her mind as it is. I shan't mention it. Thank you. You'd better see if Mr. Shoulder is in. Okay. Okay, well, the video's coming up for an hour, so we'll wrap it up fairly soon, but I think we probably should go in and meet the guy chuk, first. Chuk, chuk. Have a look around his yard. Them. A fearsome looking beast. Some trousers over here. The trousers feel damp. Freshly hung, or still wet from yeah, last night's on. rain. Hang on a minute. That glove looks familiar. I wonder if it matches the glove I found behind the plough and furrow. The gloves are a pair. Does oh. this mean Mr. Shoulder was in the alley last night? He was that old geezer. Why didn't he come inside to see me? A woolen undergarment. Mr. Shoulder must have dropped the matching glove last night. What was he doing in the alley? Rather rude of him not to come inside and see me. Have a look in the window. No sign of life. None. 
The window is nice and clean. The dwelling is by no means abandoned. A carved stone has been affixed to the door. I think it depicts a crescent moon. It's bolted onto the door itself. I can't remove it. Father, what do you make of this? A peculiar adornment. I've not seen any like this in Bewley. Though it does remind me of a passage by the Bard himself. <clears throat> it is the very error of the moon. She comes nearer Earth than she was wont, and makes men mad. Uh, could be Othello. Othello? Precisely, Miss Bateman. One out of two, Miss Bateman. <laughs> Mr. Shoulder? Is Thomasina Bateman here? I'm here in Bewley as discussed. Maybe try again. His hearing probably isn't the best at his age. I ain't round the building at all. I bang on his door with a trowel. I don't wish to beat my way in. <laughs> Why not? Mr. Shoulder, are you home? It appears Mr. Shoulder is not at home. Curses. Perhaps you could try the handle. It's locked. Perhaps he's gone for a stroll. Possibly. I'd suggest you call back later, my child. I myself must make my way back home. I have some matters to attend to at the church. Shall I accompany you back to Bewley? No, let's no, stay here. you go ahead, Father. Thank you. As you wish. Farewell, Miss Bateman. I hope Mr. Shoulder finds his way to you. Thank you for your help, Father Roach. My pleasure. Parting is such sweet sorrow. It's Romeo and Juliet, surely. Romeo and Juliet. Correct. That I shall say good night till it be morrow. Lord be with you. Well, Mr. Shoulder, you've brought me to Bewley, and now you're nowhere to be found. Hmm, can't go around his house. There's not much to interact with here. That's our room key. Uh, something about a map. Um, how do we access the map? Um, except, is it like pressing M or something? No. no I don't know. Can't I've find. no desire to lug a block of wood about the countryside. We can't go this way. Right, well, I guess we go. Can't see anything else to do. As I trudged back to Bewley across those cold moors, I made a new resolution. I would find Hobbs Barrow myself, with or without Mr. Shoulder. The train! That must be Kenneth. I should go and meet him at the station. Alright, well, I guess we can go do that. What does this thing on the bench say? Margaret's lookout. I wonder who Margaret is, or was. Mm -hmm. What's up this way? We can go further into the moors. There's a ring of mushrooms. I better not touch ring. them. They could be poisonous. Mm. Uh, maybe we'll do that another time. We should probably try and make our way to the station then. I think it's this way, isn't it? Uh, exit. I haven't got to these doors today. Book it off! <laughs> oh, 
The unmistakable <laughs> charm of old Cyril. <laughs> I don't think anyone is home. Probably for the best. Yeah, what's up this way? Oh, okay, that's the woods where we saw the priest, isn't it? What's up, what's up this way? Oh, okay. The fossil here. Hey! Stay away from that! It's bad luck to touch the Yemen's horn. I'm serious. <laughs> uh, fine. Now look at it. Remarkable. A gargantuan fossilised ammonite. This would look fantastic on my mantelpiece. Damp ragdolls have been laid out to dry in the dreary sun. Sweet little flowers. Can I pick those? The delicate flowers smell rather sweet. Who's this girl? Good day, little one. What's your name? Wally took Myrtle. Pardon? He took her and ran off. I hate him. Is Myrtle one of your dolls? Yes. My favourite. Mummy made her for me. She's so beautiful. Wally is the worst brother in the whole world. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. What is your name, little one? Jane. It's a pleasure to meet you, Jane. My name is Thomasina. This is a lovely little beck. It's where we get our water, miss. It's good for drinking and cleaning. Your dolls look lovely, Jane. Thank you, miss. I love them very much. Today was their bath day. Tell me more about the Ammon's horn. Daddy said we should never touch it. It will make the god angry. What god? Ammon, of course. <laughs> Jane, this is a fossil. It's a horn. What's a fossil, miss? A fossil is an impression of a prehistoric plant or animal embedded in rock and preserved in petrified form. This particular animal was called an ammonite. I'm confused. It's not a horn? No. It's the impression of a long-dead sea creature. Well, I believe my daddy. He doesn't lie to me. Your father is somewhat correct. You see, Ammonites were given their name for the Egyptian god Ammon. See, I told you, it's Ammon's horn. My daddy is always right. <sighs> <laughs> Why did your brother take Myrtle away? He's just jealous because daddy is letting me come with him to the market tomorrow. Wally thinks I'm daddy's favourite, so he took Myrtle from me. What if he rips her to tatters? What if he feeds her to Mr. Bryden's goat? Don't worry, Jane. I'm sure he wouldn't do such a thing. Where did your brother go? I don't know. Home, maybe. But I have to wait here for Myrtle's friends to dry out. Do you know an old man called Leonard Shoulder? No, miss. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? I... I have, yes. You have? We aren't supposed to talk about it. Why not? It's the first rule. Would you rule. like to go there? Yes, I would very much like to. I'll tell you where it is if you find Myrtle for me. You will? Yes, but don't tell anyone about it or I'll be told off. I promise. Please find Myrtle first. I miss her. I will. That's yeah, funny where she lives. Where do you live? Our home is on the other side of the village, miss. Maybe Wally went back there. Okay. Well, maybe he's left her out on the moors. Poor Myrtle. I'm going to kick him so hard. Goodbye. Bye, miss. Okay, well, that's good. She'll be able to tell us where the barrow is. That's good info. Um, but we're going to go over to the station. Which other end of this road? Oh, <laughs> look who it is. Where is Kenneth? He was supposed to wait for me at the station. Arthur Tillett, we meet again. Mr. Tillett, where did you go last night? 
Have we met? <laughs> Last night at the Plough and Furrow. Oh, Miss Bateman. I was blind drunk last night and woke up with a stinking headache. You still smell like a brewery. I'm sorry. You went to use the lavatory and never came back, Mr. Tillett. I searched everywhere for you. I think I remember you bought me a drink. Then it's all a blur. I woke up in my bed this morning with my wife sour at me for waking her at some ungodly hour. About last night, what were you going to tell me about Leonard Shoulder? Who? <laughs> Leonard Shoulder. You told me you knew him, and promised to tell me more if I bought you a drink, which I did. So what were you going to tell me? I, uh, oh, I don't really know the old bugger. But you said you did. Oh, I. No, no, I, I know not about him. No, not about Leonard Shoulder. You're hiding something, Mr. Tillett. I don't believe you. I say a lot of things when I've got the drink in me. I probably just wanted you to buy me an ale. A likely story. Look, what would I gain from lying to you? I just wanted another drink. Even if that's the case, it doesn't explain your disappearance. I... I don't remember out. Hmm. I'm looking for my assistant, Kenneth. Oh, I. His train has arrived. Not a single soul disembarked the last train, Miss Bateman. Impossible. Was that not the midday train from London by way of Derby? Aye, it were. Mr. Price were here. Unloaded a few crates. But no Kenneth. Not a soul. Hold on. One of them crates had your name on it, Miss Bateman. A great big one it were, with... A red ribbon. Aye. What is Kenneth playing at, sending my equipment but not himself? Curses. Where is my crate now? Mr. Price took away all the crates on his cart. Who? Mr. Price. He's the postmaster. Where can I find Mr. Price? He lives above the storeroom, just north of the plough and furrow. You'll see it. There's a royal mail plaque on the wall. Thank you. Yeah, Farewell for now. now. ta Mr. Tillett is right there. Alright, postmaster next stop. Oh, it's that grubby old cat. <coughs> Herbert, that's his name, isn't it? Oh, it's old Cyril the Charmer. Good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. I found Mr. Shoulder's house today, but he wasn't home. Why the bleeding hell <laughs> should I care, lass? I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. Do you know where it is? Mind your own business, lass. You really are quite helpful, aren't you? Bah. <laughs> Goodbye. Ta-ra, lass. <laughs> I need to go to the church. Um, I don't really know which way's north. What's down here? That must be the postmaster's storeroom. Is that Mr. Price? Hello. <clears throat> Good day. I haven't seen you in Bewley before. I'm just visiting. Lovely. It's nice to see a new face. We don't get many visitors. My name's Henry. Henry Long. Nice to meet you, Henry. Thomasina Bateman. Wonderful. What a treat. I'm looking for Mr. Price, the postmaster. Oh, Mr. Price, my lovely neighbour. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Curses. I saw him wheeling a large crate into his storeroom just there. It must be mine. I really need it. Have a look through the window to see if it's yours. Where did Mr. Price go? I don't know. The man were in a hurry. I know he has family in Bakewell. That's Where miles that away. From. Did he leave by foot? No, by horse. He must be a few miles down the road by now. Curses. Mm. When will Mr. Price be back? He didn't say. Could be tonight. Could be a few days. How infuriating. I told him I'd keep watch of his storeroom. 
And I'm a man of my word, Miss Bateman. I shall not budge from this spot. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? Aye. Funny old fellow. I hear he lives way out on the moor somewhere. Have you seen him recently? No. Not for a long while now that you mention it. Why do you ask? It's, it's a, a long story, but I was to meet him in Bewley. He invited me here. Well, I must thank him when I see him for inviting such an enchanting young woman. You flatter me, Mr. Long. I'm looking for Hobbs Barrow. One of those old burial hills? Yes. Do you know where it is? Believe it or not, I haven't set foot on the moor since I were a child. Why is that? I've got all I need right here in Bewley. And we're all truly blessed with the railway station which brings us lovely new faces. You seem in a good mood, Mr. Long. It's just lovely to see a new face. Where are you from, Miss Bateman? He, uh, he's always too friendly, isn't he? Originally, a small town on the outskirts of Derby, Mr. Long. Though I currently reside in London. London? I've never met anyone from London. How very exciting. Have you lived there a long time? It's been quite a few years now, yes. I've heard that the air there is so heavy with smoke, it makes it hard to breathe. Is that true? Some days. Oh, you must miss the fresh northern air. Well, you've got that in Bewley. No factories out here. Such things are a blight on his creation. I were born in this very home I stand in front of. Bewley is in my blood. Why would I ever want to leave? Especially now I can meet new folk thanks to the railway line. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. He's actually more creepy than the uh, than old Cyril who just the swears at me. The standing right there. All right, let's go and have a look in this window then. There's my crate. Kenneth always ties a red ribbon to it. I can see an envelope tucked behind the ribbon. Perhaps it can help explain Kenneth's absence. I'm going to have to get in there. Royal Mail, Postmaster's Residence. This must be the local post office. Well, let's tell the guy it's our crate, see what he does. Hello. Good day. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> Didn't have the option to. Okay, we can't exit to the right here. I presume this is just going to take us straight to back to town. It does. Might as well check the alleyway again. Seems the same as yesterday. Oh, that's probably that naughty brother, isn't it? Hello there, my name's Thomasina. Yeah? What's yours? Wally. Jane tells me you've taken Myrtle away. And what if I did? That's a bit mean, don't you think? She kicked me! Look at this bruise on my leg! That does look quite bad. Why did she kick you? Because she's a little goblin! <laughs> you don't know what she can be like! Besides, Myrtle is gone now. I've given her to the fair folk. That'll teach her. Who are the fair folk? The little people of the moors. I gave Myrtle to them. Little people? You don't mean fairies, do you? We call them fair folk round here. Wally, there is no such thing as fairies. It's two, and I gave them a doll. <clears throat> Where can I find these fair folk? Follow the tinker of their tiny belts. I hear them when the wind dies. They dance around their little house. But where is this little house? Just listen for the bells, you'll find it. <sighs> Don't think about bringing that door back. That'll just bring bad luck for all of us. Goodbye. Okay. Let's keep going this way. The road disappears over the horizon. I see nothing but moorland. Is she going back? Alright, okay. Tiny bells, eh? The road disappears over... Okay, okay. Just seeing if that was a different exit. 
No, it wasn't. All I can hear is dogs barking. I haven't seen it yet. I wonder if this girl might Good day. know. Good day. Hello, miss. Goodbye. Bye, miss. No. Nah. Day. Yes. I noticed your spectacular fossil specimen. Oh, I, I collect them. This one is called an ammonite. I'm impressed, lass. From the Jurassic period, I'd venture. Do you collect them too, then? My true interests lie in comparatively modern history. Oh, I. Well. I do love a fossil. It's important to remember that we all end up in the soil eventually. Quite. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Okay, so I haven't heard any tiny bells yet. Let's go back this way. There's still maybe a bit in the forest we haven't explored yet. This is where we met the vicar. There was that fairy ring of mushrooms, but we've already been there and they didn't leave it there. Oh, there's a hole. Uh, exit here. Let's have a look at the hole. I have no desire to go <laughs> rooting about in there. Alright, what about if we use the trowel? Go and dig up no, a badger or that something. that won't achieve anything useful. Fair enough. What's this way? I shall see you later this evening, oh. gents. Well, I say. Greetings, my dear. Hello, sir. A pause on your beauty, for I shall see you again soon. <laughs> Wait! Some nerve. Lady, you're blushing. I most certainly am not. Who are these guys? Sorry, lass. No way through here today. Says who? Lord Panswick. Now get back before you find yourself under a falling tree. Who is Lord Panswick? Our governor. He's the governor of the whole town. All right, Owen, back to work now. He lives in Bewley. Aye, not far away. But his lordship doesn't like questions or visitors. Now please leave us to our work. Tell me, who was that arrogant man here just now? Just someone passing by. It sounded like you knew him better than that. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that's none of your business. My name is Thomasina Bateman. Oh, I. You're not from round here, Thomasina Bateman. No, just visiting. What is your name, sir? Horace. Are you in charge here? I am indeed. What are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? We're chopping down trees. There is no need to be sarcastic. We're employed by Lord Panswick. He's ordered us to gather logs from his woods. That's what we're doing. These are his woods? Aye. His lordship owns most of the land round Beoli. Why are you gathering logs for Lord Panswick? By heck, you ask a lot of questions. <laughs> if you must know, his lordship is repairing an old ruin on his land. We need the timber for the restoration work. How intriguing. What type of ruin is Lord Panswick restoring? An old chapel. I should rather like to see it. Not possible. His lordship does not welcome visitors to his estate. Do you know a man named Leonard Shoulder? No, I don't. Can you let me get back to my work now? Do you know where I can find a place called Hobbs Barrow? Never heard of it. Thanks for your time. We'll be done by tomorrow morning. Come back then if you want to explore the woods. Okay, so a bit of a time gate there. Should be able to explore a bit more when we come back. Not much more to do. I'll go up and find that fairy ring again. I suppose if we could speak to the girl, she might have an idea of where he's taken it. She's up here, isn't she?
Have you found Myrtle, miss? Wally told me he's given Myrtle to the fair folk. Now I'll never see her again. There, there, child. I'll get your doll back, don't worry. Where can I find the fair folk? Wally says he sees them on the moors, dancing and riding on the backs of birds. Hmm. But be careful. You don't want to upset the fair folk. How so? They'll put a hex on you. Jane, I'm quite sure there is no such thing as fair folk. Don't let them hear you say that, miss. Wally told me you kicked him. Is that true? Wally is a liar. He took Myrtle and ran. He's such a little shit. <laughs> you shouldn't really kick your brother, even when he does deserve it. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, miss. It's from here, I don't think. So we kind of want to go to the moor. Um, however we can, where she'll actually go there and not just turn round. We could ask the old lady about this necklace. She might know who it belongs to. Excuse me, I found this necklace inside the church. Is it yours? No, pet. Perhaps someone left it behind yesterday. You keep hold of it for now. I'll ask around at the next service. Are you sure? I trust you. Well, I wouldn't. <laughs> Alright, was it up here? Yes. I'm sure this must be where it is. I'd better not touch them. They could be poisonous. It looks like something has been buried in the middle. Trial time. Thomasina, please stop leaving your toys lying about the place. What happened the last time you left your dolly under the tree? A fox ate it, madam. <laughs> yes, it did. Fetch it now, won't you? Then I'll fix your supper. Yes, madam. Scroll? Oh, it does. Hello, fairies. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here's the doll. There you are, Josephine. I won't let the foxes eat you. Who's that you have there, little bird? Josephine. She introduced me to the fairies. Oh, fairies, you say? Yes, Daddy. Do you believe in fairies? Of course. Do you see those mushrooms over there? Yes. That's a gateway to their kingdom. That's where Josephine and I go to talk to the fairies. Now, listen to me, Thomasina. Yes? You're old enough now to hear this. There's no such thing as fairies or talking dolls, my little bird. What do you mean? I'm sorry, my dear child. I do not wish to upset you. I just want to make sure that you understand the difference between fantasy and reality. Josephine oh, this is, Victorian is just a parenting. doll, and fairies do not exist. But, Daddy... Science is the great antidote to the poison of enthusiasm and superstition. Please always remember that. If you hear anything about fairies or the like again, know that it's hogwash. What is it? Hogwash. Did Wally bury the doll, I wonder? That's my guess. You. This must be Jane's rag doll. What's it holding? There is something somewhat unsettling about its appearance. Perhaps these wriggling worms are the fair folk young Wally was so fearful of. How strange. There is a hairpin pierced through the arm. This may come in handy. I'll keep it. At Picking least I shall not return maybe. from Bewley empty-handed.
This appears to be a recently dug unmarked grave. Trial time. I may be a barrow <laughs> digger, but I'm no grave robber. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I wonder if we can pick the lock to Leonard's house. There's also this cairn, isn't there? What a peculiar name, the Devil's Toe. I can't quite see the resemblance myself. The Devil's Toe, a local landmark. Let's try knocking first, then I'll try the hairpin. I've come a long way to meet you, Mr. Shoulder. Please open the door. Alright, let's try the hairpin. Hmm. I can't pick this type of lock with a hairpin. Good to know. All right, well, we'll go back then. The only other lock I can think of is the one to the storeroom. But there's that neighbour standing there. Let's give the trowel back to the old lady. We did say we would, didn't we? I don't wish to give that away. All right. It's mine now, I guess, after having stolen it from the church. Yeah, I very much doubt we're going to be able to pick the lock with him there, but... I can't try says. to pick the lock whilst Mr Long is standing there. Is there a way to get rid of him? Oh, let's talk to him again. Hello. Good day. Your opinion of the railway station differs widely from your fellow townsfolk, Mr Long. I've not met anyone particularly keen on it. That railway line is the start of a new era for Bewley. Mark my words, there's much to protect here, but we need new blood. I hope that some of you visitors will actually stay here permanently. Why is that? So I have new friends to talk to. <laughs> some people here He's don't mad. want any new friends. Cyril Farnaby, the miserable old sod, is the worst offender. Well, we've had the pleasure of I've meeting Cyril. I've had the pleasure of meeting <laughs> That's exactly Cyril. What she he said. really dislikes the railway station. Absolutely miserable he is. I've tried to convince him many times that the station will help Yuli. He just doesn't understand. I met him last night in the plough and furrow. Aye, the scene of our many debates. Blimey. I could go for an ale right now, actually. Ooh, maybe we can get Can I buy go. you a drink? Really? No. Wait. Do you think Mr. Kemp will let me open a tap? Perhaps. You could always ask him. Hmm. I shouldn't leave anywhere. Mr. Price is relying on me to keep watch of his storeroom. Goodbye. Don't be a stranger. Right, okay, let's talk to the uh, innkeeper. The barman. See if we can get that guy a drink. And um, maybe get rid of him for a minute. What can you tell me about Lord Panswick? A most charming man, Miss Bateman. He looks after us here, a good fellow. Where does he live? Panswick Manor, on the moors. No visitors allowed. His lordship likes his privacy. My assistant has not arrived as planned. Oh. Is everything all right? I'm not entirely sure. Am I to keep a room for him, just in case? If you could hold it for one more night, Mr. Kemp. As you wish. I'm sorry to ask this, Mr. Kemp, but could I please open a tab? Still now in your purse? I'm afraid not. My assistant hasn't arrived as planned, so I find myself in a bind. He must have put the money in my crate, which is currently being held in Mr. Price's storeroom. Well, as you know, I run an honest establishment here, and I do trust you. So yes, I'll open an account for you, to be settled at the end of your stay. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Kemp. Now then, I'll be needing something of value as a deposit. I thought you said you trusted me. Aye. It's not personal, lass. One can never be too cautious. Goodbye. See you soon. We could offer him the silver necklace that we found, maybe. Will you accept this silver cross pendant as a deposit? 
Can I take a closer look at it? Aye, silver. That'll do. Thank you, Mr Kemp. Can I get you something to drink? A tankard of your finest ale, Mr Kemp. There we are. That's two pence on your account. Thank you. Two whole pence. Most agreeable. All right, so let's go and uh, see if we can get rid of that annoying fellow over by the post storage. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you a drink, Henry? Really? Really. We can talk more at the inn. But I told Mr Price I'd keep watch of his storeroom. Doors have locks for this very reason. You're right. One drink won't take long. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. The rocket weren't Stevenson's only design, you know. Before that, there were the Blucher and the Locomotion. But my favourite would have to be the Lancashire Witch. I believe he built that in 1828. <laughs> in Newcastle, of course. Train bore. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. I couldn't even get a word in. He likes a good chinwag, our Henry. He certainly does. How are we going to get him to stay here? Um. Hmm. Okay, let's. Uh, well, well, we'll check if he's still standing there. I suspect he probably is. There he is. Let's, let's just table that for now. Let's go up to the uh, the girl and give her the doll. And see what see where that leads. I present to you, Myrtle. Myrtle! I missed you so much! Now, I believe we had a deal. Hide and seek! Come back! It's in moments like these I thank myself for not having children. <laughs> There. Okay. Um, I guess we've got to go find it. Let's check the woods. Oh, there she is. Hey! I'm just going to crawl in that badger hole. <laughs> she did as well. <laughs> Jane? Jane, get out of there. Don't make me come in. Fine. Curses. The hole is too small for me to fit through. <laughs> Trial time. I was always happiest with a trowel in my hand. Uncovering hidden worlds within the earth itself. Clod by clod. That should do it. <laughs> Jane! Interesting. Jane, come out this instant. I can't see a damned thing in here. I need a light source. Got a match. Curses. The useless thing blew out. So she not just go Jane? she not go any further. Jane Right. Okay. <laughs> the blacksmith had a lamp. <laughs> Maybe we can uh, convince him to let us borrow it. I 
have one just like this. Good day. Yes? Mr Crozier, might I borrow your lantern? Sorry, lass. I need it. My eyesight is not what it used to be. The extra light helps me see what I'm hammering. I understand. Thanks for your time. <sighs> Aye. Speak to you later. Um, okay. Let's go to the church. Probably candles and stuff here. I mean, there is, but... The flowers have long since dried out. I don't want them. Locked. Locked as well. I think they all might be. We pick those locks. It's the wrong type of lock. Guess not. Uh, the vicar might be in now. He does have a pair of glasses. I wonder if we can get them, give them to the blacksmith. It's locked. Oh, that's locked, is it? It's the wrong type of... Oh, they're all the wrong type of lock, aren't they? I where the vicar went. Okay, so we're currently stuck looking for a way to get rid of Mr. Long. The annoying Mr. Long. Oh, we can try talking to him again. I don't know if another option will open up. Maybe we convince him to have a few drinks, he'll just fall asleep in the pub or something. We can try that. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale won't hurt. I shall take you up on your offer, Miss Bateman. Let us make our way. If this second time doesn't work, we'll try a third time. The rear time. wheels are powered by coupling rods, would you believe? The boiler had two flu tubes. Two! There were nothing like it. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta da, Miss Bateman. Curses. I'm starting to feel somewhat tipsy. I'm here to excavate Hobbs Barrow, not Hobbs Barrels. Hobbs Barrels achievement. Okay, let's go to our room. There was a candle there. It's possible that we can take that with us. I was burnt down. The candle has melted. It's not much use anymore. Perhaps Mr. Kemp will replace it this evening. Hmm. Can we pick the lock on the drawers? The drawers don't open. I can't store any. Fair enough. We'll try one more time with old Henry. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another drink? I suppose one more ale will- I shall take you- Let us make- I feel at this point I'm probably more likely to pass out before he does. Bugley is the latest of many additions to the Midland Railway line. Speaking of change, I hear the whole frontage of Derby Station is being rebuilt. Designed by an architect by the name of Tubshaw, if I remember correctly. Well, that's me. I better be off. Wait! Ta-ra, Miss Bateman. Mr. Long can really put away a drink. Thank goodness I've switched to water. <laughs> um, we could go and speak to the guy at the railway station. Maybe we, if they get talking in the pub, they'll keep them busy for a while. <sighs> Cyril's not much help. About last night? You really don't remember where you went last night? As I say, it's all a blur. I remember needing a piss, then nothing. 
Well, you must have missed me when I came out. I did not. I even went to the gents' toilets to find you. Oh, I A sight for sore eyes. It was. I <sighs> checked everywhere, and you were nowhere to be found. The back door leading to the alleyway was blocked from the outside. Oh, I. Yes. You must have exited through that door, Mr. Tillett. But you just said it were blocked. There must be an explanation. My mind has drawn a blank. Mm. Why was the door blocked? Did you block it? I told you I don't remember. I've no to say because I remember not. Hmm. So you work here? Aye. Bewley Station Master at your service. Would you like to buy a ticket? Not just yet, thank you. I understand that some of the locals are not too happy about this new station. Aye. I'd go as far as say in the whole village. How long has the station been open for? About three months. We're on the Midland Railway Line. This employment's been a saviour for me. If I weren't stood here, I'd be drinking my life away at the pub right now. It's worth the occasional withering look from Cyril and the rest of them. What does a station master do? A bit of this and a bit of that. I don't wish to bore you with such things. As you wish. My responsibilities here keep me on the straight and narrow, I'll tell you that much. A sense of duty can do wonders for a lost soul. Indeed. This must be a rather lonesome post to occupy. Trains pass through here more regularly than you might think, lass. Um, How's your headache hmm. faring? It feels like a steam engine is driving full pelt in a circle around me skull. Be sure to drink plenty of water, Mr. Tillett. Aye, aye. I'll survive. Farewell for now. Tara. Okay. I'll speak to Cyril again, I suppose. Or good good day to you, Cyril. I'll do, lass. What do you make of Henry Long? <laughs> An idiot who thinks that station's a good idea. Can you imagine? Strangers pouring into Bewley. Turns the stomach, that does. Maybe he has a point. You could travel. Bah! You're an outsider. I'd expect you to have such a bad opinion. But Henry, he's a Bewley lad. We've had the odd Barney or two in the pub over it all. I can imagine. Let's buy them both a drink, then. Can I buy you a drink, Cyril? Now? Yes. Go on, then, lass. Follow me. So then, it turns around and says, Why is a dog like a tree? And I says, I don't know. And he says, Because they both lose their bark once they're dead. <laughs> Very droll, Cyril. Well, it's been a pleasure, but I must be off. Aye, lass. Ta for the drink. You're not too bad for an outsider. <laughs> okay, so let's go and get Henry Long in here then. Hopefully they'll have an argument and I'll be able to sneak off. The man is standing. No, 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 no. Talk to him. Hello. Good day. Can I buy you another? I suppose I shall take. Let us make. Right. If this doesn't work, I don't know what else to do. To think, if that station hadn't been built, we would never have met. Blessed be the Midland Railway. Idiot! <laughs> <laughs> that station is the worst decision this village has ever made! Cyril Farnaby. A miserable man with miserable ideas. I will change your mind even if it kills me. Right. This sounds like it. Right, let's pick that lock before he comes back. Kenneth taught me this useful trick. A hairpin is much more than a hair accessory. A few wiggles and this lock should spring right open. I 
snapped the hairpin in the process, but I managed to unlock the door. Right then. Let's get in that crate. Let's open this envelope. There's a note inside. Miss Bateman, I beg for your forgiveness. A matter of grave urgency has arisen in London, and I cannot join you in Bewley. I've packed your usual equipment, and pray you will find local assistance in my absence. I look forward to seeing you upon your return. Yours faithfully, Kenneth Murdoch. How very frustrating. I wonder what happened. I'd better get this to the alley before Mr. Long comes back. Moving a fully laden crate through the village square was no easy task. Somehow, no one was there to witness it. But I didn't give up, because I never give up, do I, Mother? I am as stubborn as my father, as you liked to remind me. There we go. I'm hoping there's a lantern in there. She did say that she had one. Wait. Where is my money? <clears throat> it's not in here. Kenneth, you absolute liability of a man. It looks like everything else is in here. Hicks, specimen trays, shovels. Oh, my chisel, I'll take that. Ah, oh, my lantern. It feels light. There mustn't be any oil inside. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave the rest in the crate. Stanley assured me things would be safe here. No money and no assistant. This is most inconvenient. Still, I've been in worse situations. I've got a tab at the inn for now. I'll worry about money later. I must find that barrow and get on with the excavation. Okay, so we need oil. I might ask the blacksmith. He might have some spare. He does have a lantern like that. I don't think I've seen any other oil anywhere so far. Look, we have the same lantern. Aye, so we do. Good day. Yes. I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What's he willing what to trade? What could I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. I mean, what have I got? Does he want the trowel? Hmm. I don't think... Does he want the chisel? Hmm. Hmm. Does he want a white glove? Hmm. <laughs> okay. How about that rusty old bucket? Do they want my room key? Hmm. No. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. Uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Now that we have our chisel. Let's get the fossil out, shall we? Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. Right, well he collects fossils, so hopefully that's something he's willing to trade for. Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilised ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then. It is a beauty, that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. Right, can we, like... Uh, I suppose we combine that with that, do we? 
Good. My lantern is fueled and ready for action. Oh, there's the map. I see it now. Oh, it's a, probably a fast travel thing. Let's see if that works. Let's go to Hern, Hernwood. Ah. Very good. I'm going in that badger hole now. Right. Let's put this lantern to good use. Jane, come out at once. What? It is a badger hole. <laughs> Goodness me. It's only a badger. Jane! Silly, what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. <laughs> so where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. Hmm, little squizzle. All right, uh, we'll do the map to church, I suppose. So north from the churchyard. That'd be up here. Is that where the bench is? No. Uh, oh, just says exit. We'll do that. As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. Mm. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. Right, we've entered a completely new area now. Um, this video must be getting on for length, so <laughs> I think we'll leave it there for now, but I'm going to pick this up. I think we'll play this each day until we complete it. Um, we've seen little signs of the, of the creepiness. Um, I think that's probably going to ramp up as, as we proceed through the game. And uh, she's hinted at things bad happening to her in the future. And uh, the fear of the locals there when talking about the barrow that they don't really want to do. So hopefully in the next episode we'll start to get into more of the creepiness in the game. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's been good fun to play. Uh, it's a good puzzle point and click game. It's um, The puzzles are good. They're uh, not immediately obvious, some of them, but all logical so far you know you've been able to sort of think your way through them without too much trouble so far so that's good enjoy that um so yeah so i hope you join me next time as well for the second episode of uh, the excavation of hobbs barrow and i'll see you then bye for now